Okay, so they gave us sine of theta, and they're asking us to find cosecant. So we're doing x, y, r. So looking at this problem, Migdalia, they told us sine is negative 4 fifths. So what does that mean to us? Sine means y over r. So what's my y and what's my r then? y is negative 4, r is 5. Okay, r is never negative, so I know the negative goes with the y. Super. I've got y and r. What other thing do I need? x. How do I find x? If you have two, you can find the third one using Pythagorean theorem. So you would do x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And you can plug in x squared plus negative 4 squared equals 5 squared. What's x going to be, though? 3. Don't forget about your special right triangles. We try to shorten time down for you. Remember, if you have 4 and 5, the missing one is 3. So you could solve this over here. You would get 3. Yeah, it still works because it's just talking about distances, and we're going to square them. Don't forget. So when you square them, the negative sign doesn't matter anymore. <coughs> Do not forget about this part of the problem right there. It says you are in quadrant three. You have to use every bit of information they told you. You're in quadrant three. So, Robin, what's it telling us if it tells you you're in quadrant three? Your x and your y are negative. So we found our y was negative. Remember, Pythagorean theorem really is telling us it's either plus or minus. And Robin said since we're in quadrant three, that means my x has to be negative as well. Great. Did that. The last step of this question says find cosecant of theta. So Taylor Grace, if we're finding cosecant, what are we looking for in this problem? R over y. So my r is 5. My y is negative 4, so my answer is negative 5 fourths. This was really the easiest question of all time. Why was it the easiest question of all time? I didn't need to. I had sine and cosecant. Just flip it. You know what sine is. Cosecant would just be the reciprocal of it. That's all we did. We did the x because it's good practice, but in theory, we didn't really need it. Questions on the first one? How did I get what? How did I get 3? Pythagorean theorem. I plugged in y and r. Okay, so if I actually worked it out, I plugged in y and r. x squared plus 16 equals 25. I'd subtract 16 x equals plus or minus 3. It's a negative 3 because we're in quadrant 3. Other questions? Let's go to the next one. Find amplitude, period, length, and phase shift. We just did this in Bellwork. There's another example on your notes right there worked out for you if you need another example. But let's do this one. Amplitude, period, length, phase shift. talking about amplitude on this one. Madeline, what's our amplitude going to be? Negative 4. You can say negative 4. I always like just saying 4, but if you say negative 4, you're not wrong. Okay, it's that number in front. It's 4. Okay, the next question is period length. So, Samantha, when we talk about period length, what is the basic period length of a sine or a cosine graph? We start off with 2 pi. Is the period length going to change on this one? Yeah, Jenny, how do you know that the period length is going to change on this one? There's a number in front of the x. When there's a number in front of our x, Jenny, what do I need to do with this problem? Multiply by the reciprocal of whatever's in front of your x. So I'm going to get 2 pi times 1 half. So, Jenny, what's my period length going to be? The period length is pi. The last question is phase shift. Remember, phase shift is how much do you move left or right? Okay, how much do you move left or right? So, Jasmine, on this problem, am I going to shift to the left or am I going to shift to the right? Why am I shifting to the right? Yep, inside the parentheses, a negative 3, and we always do opposite when it's inside of parentheses. So, Jasmine is correct in saying that we are shifting to the right on this problem. Cool, we start off with that 3. Is it just going to be 3 here, Tyler? No. What do I need to do with that 3? 
What did we do with period length? We, not 2 pi. We multiply by the reciprocal of whatever's in front of our x. You do the same thing for period length and phase shift. So I need to multiply 3 times the reciprocal of whatever's in front of my x. So what do I need to multiply by? 1 half. So my phase shift here is going to be what? 3 over 2 to the right. That is my answer for that one. So amplitude is the number in front. Period length, start with 2 pi and multiply by the reciprocal. Phase shift, whatever's in parentheses and multiply by the reciprocal. Questions on anything there? Okay, let's go to question three. So now we're graphing. So we did this in bell work already. You should be good at it, or at least getting better at it. So negative three, sine of two x, minus two. We're following our graphing checklist over there. The first thing it asks you to do is to find the period length and label it. So we're always going to start off with this basic graph thing with four hash marks. First thing I want to do is find my period length. So Cortez, what's my basic period length going to be? Always start off with 2 pi. Is it going to change on this one, Cortez? Where do we look to see if it changes? Something in front of the x. So is it going to change on this one? Yep. You've got a number in front of our x. We've got a 2 in front of my x, so it's going to change. So, uh, Charisse, what do I need to do here? Multiply by the reciprocal, whatever's in front of her x. So she multiplied by 1 half. So what's your period length going to become? Just pi. Okay, so first step is find the period length and we're going to label it. So this fourth hash mark up here is going to be pi. The halfway mark is half of that, or pi over 2. Then half of that, half of pi over 2 is pi over 4. 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths, or 3 pi over 4. There is my period length. Questions there? Next thing it asks us to do is to graph the midline or the vertical shift. So Deshaun, do I have a vertical shift on this graph? Yeah, which way am I going to shift on my vertical shift? Down to his vertical shift is whatever's tagged on the end. So when he looks at this problem and he sees that minus 2, he knows he's going to be vertically shifted down 2. So he's going to go down to negative 2 and draw in his new midline. That's going to be the new center of his graph at negative 2. Cool, we did that. Step three is the amplitude. So, Taylor Shoemake, what's my amplitude going to be on this graph? <laughs> Negative three. Okay, I always just like treating it as three, but yes, you're right. It's three. So she needs to go up three and down three from her center line. So from here at negative two, she's going to add three to get her to one. And she's going to subtract 3 to get her to negative 5. There's the top line and the bottom line. Once I've done that, I did my amplitude. Now finally I'm going to graph it. So I'm graphing a sine curve. So where is a sine curve going to start? We sin in the middle. So we're going to have a sine curve starting right here in the middle of our graph. Then at our next hash mark, where are we going? Down. Why down? Because of the negative, we're flipping. So instead of going to the top next, we're going to go to the bottom. Middle, top, middle. There's my graph. Last one on the front side. And given an ordered pair, find the trigonometric function. So we did this already in Bellwork. They gave us an ordered pair. We we're finding cosine, so we listed the x, y, and r, and then solved. Okay, so for this one, given this ordered pair, we're finding tangent. Okay, we are finding a trig function. Okay, so if we're finding a trig function, Taylor Grace, what's the first thing I should do for this problem? x, y, and r. Okay, 
So X, Y, and R is the first thing I got to do. Now I got to label some stuff. So Destiny, what do you know about X, Y, or R? X is 2. So what do you think your Y is going to be? Yep. And so my R is going to be 9. Very good. X, Y, R. X, Y, R. If it's the same radius on, or same number on bottom, we can assume it's the radius. Okay, it's the easy way to do that problem. We are finding tangent. So when we're thinking tangent, we just got to look at our unit circle and think, what is a tangent going to be? Tangent is y over x. So not too ugly here. If we're doing tangent, Morgan, what's tangent going to be? If it's y over x? Yep, radical 77 over 2. When would it get a little bit uglier on that problem? If it was flipped, if radical 77 was on bottom, then we'd have to multiply top and bottom by radical 77. But it wouldn't be that much different. Questions on that one? Again, another easy one.